Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Just gonna give you a quick overview of my article here. If you're on YouTube, I've got a link below. If you're in the article, feel free to scroll through. You can listen or watch as you read the rest of the article. So when we think of Excel, a lot of people think of something a little like this. A table, rows of data, maybe a little bit of processing, something for budgeting, who knows? Uh, maybe if you're getting fancy, you throw in a chart or two, but Excel can actually do a whole lot more. And the underlying things that enable us to do that are a set of visual design features in Excel that we see right up here. The ability to insert pictures, the ability to insert shapes, icons, charts, and some of the customization options that come along with those things. So I'm gonna start with shapes. It's one of the most important things and it's kind of the underlying building block of how I start to build more complex designs. This is true for almost all visual editors. Uh, if you are using an app like, uh, if you're using an app like Figma, Photoshop, etc., you are in a sense always using shapes. Um, you can draw, you can do all of those things, but when you're drawing, you're drawing a line and a line is essentially a shape. And all of those types of components are available here. If you wanna add, draw a line, you can draw a line, a curve, you can do a freeform shape, um, you can scribble, you can do complex abstract shapes like we have in here, you call outs, banners, all sorts of stuff. And we can layer those shapes up and start to make far more complex designs. Uh, these are made out of a series of rectangles. Uh, layered up rectangles, our background is a rectangle, our components for the card are a rectangle, and there's text and charts layered on top. So that's a quick intro to the shapes menu. Shapes have a lot of different fill options from gradient fills to texture fills to pattern fills that allow us to then start adding things like images. Images are one of the other big things that you can start adding into your designs to make it look more interesting. Let me pull up an example here. So if you look here, you see these card designs as part of a seasonal foraging guide I put together, and you can see how I've included images in my design, and it kind of brings everything to life. People don't really like to use images in Excel for some reason, but it has all of the functionality for adding images that something like PowerPoint has. So why not do it and liven up whatever you're building? Um, these images also can be used as the fill for a shape, which means you can essentially do something akin to cropping a photo in an abstract shape, or in a complex shape or whatever you want and get some very cool effects. In this case, I have a rounded rectangle with a fill in it and those rounded rectangles are then stacked on top of other rounded rectangles to create these cards. Uh, a little bit of text goes in there, a couple of icons and you have something that looks pretty cool. So icons are another fun thing. I've got the icon menu open here. Most people don't even know this exists but we've got an icon menu right here in the, in the menu bar and a whole set of free icons, along with a set of free stock images that just come with Excel and you can use whenever you want. Um, texts and colors are another big thing in Excel that often gets overlooked. We use the defaults, and when you use the default sets of fonts and colors in Excel, your work looks like every other Excel workbook there is. Uh, we've gotten really used to those default colors, they're super common, and we've all kind of learned to interpret those as something from Excel. So I do a couple of things. One is I choose new fonts, uh, a variety of fonts as well. So I mix it up. I try to have different sizes for headings and subheadings and text. Um, and I try to sometimes mix it up and not use the default fonts. Um, there's a lot of font options available. Explore them, test them, see what you like. But more importantly is colors. The default colors in Excel are not a match for most people's project. If you are doing an Excel report that's maybe going to be the equivalent of your PowerPoint deck or show the kind of data that you'd include in a PowerPoint deck, the default set of colors is not going to be a match most likely. So taking the time to go in, select colors that are a better match for what you're doing really pays off in the long run. Um, I take a decent amount of time to come up with color palettes that match and I go into a little bit more detail in the article about how to come up with color palettes. It's hard if you're not a designer sometimes, but it's all very doable with a little bit of a learning curve. The last thing I'm gonna say is that one of the easiest ways to learn in Excel is by just pulling apart somebody else's Excel file. So I've got a couple ways to do this. I have a newsletter where I send out a free sample file every month, uh, sometimes more than one. And I also have an Excel toolkit you can check out where you can get lots of different components in lots of different colors and start pulling them apart, deconstructing them and learn how they're built. Thanks so much for checking it out. Hope you enjoyed the article.